So one of the big frustrations in HPLC is to understand dwell volume. And dwell volume is defined as the volume between where your gradient is formed and when it touches the column. And it's just a practical piece of plumbing. It's like, okay, there's a piece of tubing between the pump and the auto sampler, and that piece of tubing is not zero volume. It takes a certain amount of time for that new mobile phase. So just because I tell it 11% doesn't mean it's actually pumping 11% through the column. So my crude analogy is, when you take a shower in the morning, do you ever step into the shower and then turn on the water? No, why not? I bet you know within a millimeter exactly where to put that handle, but you never do it because you know the water's gonna be cold. Even though you told it you want warm water, it comes off cold. Why is that? Because the hot water's gotta get from the hot water tank to your shower head, and that is your dwell volume. That's why it takes time. That's why it's misleading when it says, I'm at a perfect temperature and it's not at a perfect temperature. Well, that's because of that dwell volume or dwell time. So my best advice, now that you know what it is, forget I told you anything about it, just, just make it disappear. If you follow all of my rules about method development, about looking at where peaks come off, that's already factored in. Don't overthink it because the engineer types, you're gonna try and compensate for it. You'd be like, well, if I knew what the volume was, I simply subtract it and divide by this. Nope, don't do that um, because you're gonna screw up. It's uh, the dwell volume, we could measure it, but it of itself is, uh, is a variable. It can vary based on the pressure. So don't overthink this one, just understand why it's there. Okay, that's dwell volume.